this is going to be, I know I got one of these Thanksgiving sermons. And I tell you what, what a better time to do it. We've got enough of commercialism during the month of December now that people want to set back Christ and they want to put forth Santa Claus and put forth all this stuff, bye, 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 the whole month of Christmas. And I tell you what, but you know what? We can take that time set aside for Jesus. And you know, this month we can set this side time aside for Jesus. Let's thank Jesus for what he's done for us. And tonight, that's what I want to preach about, having a heart of thanksgiving. But to get to a heart of thanksgiving, there's got to be a place you got to start at. And here's where we're going to start. In Psalms 125, 1 through 5, says, let me give Jerry time to get it up there. You got it up there? Okay. Guess that's it. Song of Degrees. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands into iniquity. To do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts, as for such as turn aside into their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. The Lord wants us to be content with what we have. He wants us to be content. He don't want us to uh, go in after the things of this world. He don't want us wanting to, uh, do, uh, to, to seek things after this world. He wants us to hold faith. Uh, hold faith, hold on to faith, and hold on to the Lord. He wants us to be strengthened in Him. That's where we're going to start out. we got to start out by faith. we got to be trusting in the Lord. we got to trust in Him. And He says, For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands into iniquity. He tells us to continue to do good. He tells us not to go down the path of the crooked ways. He tells us not to choose the ways of the wicked. Because, see, the ways of the wicked, the rod is going to come on them. Punishment is going to come their way. But punishment for you and I, if we choose the Lord and we choose to continue to do good, that righteousness is going to come our way. But righteousness will not come their way. The rod of punishment will come upon those that choose not to do good. Now, will he cause you to do good? Oh, yes, he will. He will cause you to choose right ways. I know that because he's made me choose. At times, he knew where to take me to a place and said, okay, you will choose, and you will choose this day whom you shall serve. Well, who do you think I'm going to serve? I'm going to serve God, especially when I'm facing death. Let's see, do you want to believe? Do you want to live for me, or do, would you rather die? Well, I'll believe, and I'll live for you, Lord. I will choose to do good. I will choose to do right. He'll make you choose the right way if you're not choosing the right way. Thank God. There's something else to be thankful for right there. As for such as turn aside into their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the work of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. Continue in the Lord, and peace shall follow you. But those that walk, follow after the workers of iniquity, and then you choose not to do the right thing after the Lord's putting you in a place, and you continue to not choose to do what is right, even when he brings you to a corner and says choose to do right, but instead you go down this crooked way. Instead you're choosing a road that's crooked. And every time you go down that road, you go off this way, and then you go off that way. And the Bible says not to look to the left nor to the right, but walk that straight and narrow way. We walk a straight and narrow. What I mean by a straight and narrow, I don't mean that you're not going to drop a bobby pin and have to get over there and get it. I'm saying the Lord says strive to do enter in that straight and narrow way. Strive to enter right. Strive to do what is good. And so we start out, okay, Lord, we're going to live for you, and we're going to trust you, and we're going to have faith, and we're going to walk in the ways of righteousness. We're going to start out like this. And I'll tell you what, those people that are thankful because they held on the right way, and they walked in the right way of faith and righteousness, and they held on, they walked on that straight and narrow way. They kept their eyes on the Lord, and they didn't get their eyes on the workers of iniquity. They didn't want to go after the workers of iniquity and do the things that they're doing. They came out of that, and they didn't want to go back into that. So now we got a people with their heart right with God. So where do we start? Psalms 128 says 1 through 6. 
He says, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the size of thine house. Thy children like all the plants, round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace upon Israel. As Christians, we are to follow the, uh, ought not to follow the heathen in their ways. Because if we follow the heathens in their ways, we'll find ourselves walking down that crooked path. I'm telling you, it's up to us to seek the face of God. And I tell you what, if you will, the blessings will start to flow in your life. At first, we started out with faith. Then we're trusting God. Maybe it's not all going to happen all at once in your life. You may not see the blessings yet, but God's trying you right now. He's going to see you, Sister Ashley, and if you're going to hold on and trust in Him and believe that He's going to do that. I tell you what regardless of what they had for that meal to put on that table it might not have been the turkey but God supplied their need and they were thankful for it they were faithful to God they were trusting the Lord I'm telling you he says trust me even though you may not have a turkey on your plate you may not have a steak on your plate I don't know what you got to set on your plate I don't know what you're going through but God says trust me know that I am God be still and know that I am God I will make a way where there seemed to be no way in your life. But if you cannot trust God and be faithful and you fall back in iniquity, even though he's trying you to see what you're going to do, how can you ever come to a place where you'll have a heart of thanksgiving if you can't trust God? He's trying to get you to a heart of thanksgiving. Maybe you don't have a thankful heart right now. Maybe everything that you do and everything that you're facing, you're still complaining because you haven't got the next thing. It's like someone dyeing their hair, and then they get it perfect. And before no, well, you know, it might look better darker. Well, they dyed darker, and what happens? Oh, that's the worst thing they ever did. And then what happened? But instead of being content with that color that was just right, they had to get it a little bit darker. It's like the things of this world. We think we just haven't got enough, and we got to have a little bit more. And not only we're going to try to make ourselves have those things, and instead of waiting on the Lord and letting him bless us, we're going to try to make it work. And the Lord says, no, I ought to be. We're to trust God. We're not to walk after the world. We're not to walk after the things that the world goes after. We're not to seek after the things that the world seeks after. Not at all. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. If we will seek the face of the God, and if we will search him, I'm telling you what, when you search Jesus like you're supposed to search the Lord, and you search him like you're looking for a diamond under the rug, I'm telling you what, if I tell somebody I lost some diamond rings, and if they can find it, they can have them, and they're worth a $1,000, I'm telling you what, how many people are going to be all over this church looking for those rings? Plenty of people will be looking through here looking for those diamond rings because Cheryl says she, they can have them. If they find them, it's keepers. You get to keep them. There are going to be people coming up here with one of those little things. You know, some kind of, they're going to be looking for it. Well, are you trying to seek the Lord that way? Are you searching them? Are you going on your knees? Are you scraping on your knees looking underneath the, uh, what are we doing? Are we falling on our knees and looking under the pews? Are we looking everywhere we can for Jesus? Are we going into the corners and the crowd? Are we getting everywhere in there and making sure that it's, he's there? I'm telling you what Jesus said, it's time. It's time to look. It's time to search me like you're looking for diamonds and jewels. It's time to search me like you search the things for this world. The way that you want to increase in this world. He says, I want you to increase in me. He says, I want you to decrease. And I want to increase in you. Why? So we can have a heart of thanksgiving. A heart of thanksgiving. This is a month where we are to have a heart. We are to have a thanksgiving heart. What? Year round. Year round. But I tell you, this month ought to be acknowledgement of everything he's done for us. Every, I mean, uh, this ought to be the month of thanksgiving where we ought not be complaining. Because if you got bread, if you got water on your table, and you've got shoes on your feet, and you got a roof over your t- uh, head, I don't care what it's like, 
we better be thankful because there's people that don't have that. There's people that don't have what we got. And we're living in a nation where we can serve God and be free to live for God. I'll tell you what, there's nations where they cannot do what we're doing. They cannot come into the house and enjoy the music like this. Enjoy the preaching of the gospel. Enjoy and sit underneath all this. I'm telling you, they don't have that. And we don't be thankful for what we've got here. And I'm thankful, whether it be a few people or whether it be a thousand or two. Because, see, when we can say thankful, I'm thankful for what little I have, then God can give you much and bless you. He blesses those that are thankful for what they have. And they thank God for it and not complain. Now, we're going to get down into Psalms 136, 1 through 26. The Lord doesn't want us to walk contrary to him. Jesus said he doesn't want us to walk contrary to him. He wants us to walk towards him because there's no peace for the workers of the iniquity. Let's walk con- uh, with the Lord, not contrary to him. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretches out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them. He's telling us to give thanks for all these things. These are things way back. You ain't got nothing to be thankful for? Well, let me give you a list. This is the Thanksgiving prayer right here. It's a prayer of thanksgiving. That's what this is called. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even a heritage unto Israel his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our low estate, for his mercy endureth forever. And hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever. Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever and ever. What does the Lord want us to focus on? He wants us to focus on the mercy that he showed us. My mother was telling me today, she said we went and had a, a ladies meeting. It was so good, and everybody had to give something that they were, that they, out of one word, what the Lord might mean to them, and the one I'm uh, giving thanks for, and one I'm said salvation and different ones and before I even got the the uh, uh, this morning the Lord showed me what I ought to preach on this morning and then I asked him again to get confirmation and I turned around and I turned to the prayer of thanksgiving and I had just spoke to my mother and just told her, what do you think the word I would have used? It would have been mercy. He showed mercy. And she said, well, nobody said that. And I said, well, that's what he would have done, show mercy. And then I turned over there to the scriptures and I said, Lord, show me. And he said, there's mercy right there. Mercy for all things. I showed you mercy. I showed you mercy when I died. I showed you mercy when I went to the cross. I showed you mercy when I gave you the Holy Spirit. I showed you mercy when I reached down into the depths of your sinful life and I pulled you up out of the sin of death and the grave. He showed us mercy. And why did he keep repeating that through 26 scriptures? 
he showed us mercy. I give you mercy. Oh, be thankful for he shows us mercy. Oh, be thankful for he showed you mercy. He says, I show you mercy. I give you the mercy. I tell you what, what was he saying? I'm on the mercy seat. I'm sitting on the throne. And I tell you what, I show mercy right now. He's reaching out into a dying, lost world through you and I. And he wants us to go out into this world of sin. And he wants you to show mercy. If he can show mercy towards you, you can show mercy towards others. You can reach out to a dying and lost world. And you don't have to turn your nose up at the people of this world because you don't know who God is calling out. You don't know who God chose. You don't know who the next prophet is. You don't know who the next Isaiah is. You don't know who the next Joel is. You don't know the next Hannah. You don't know who it's going to be. But Jesus knows. And so us as children of God are to reach out and show mercy like he showed mercy to all of us when he brought us up out of Egypt. He showed us mercy. He brought us up out of this world of sin and death in the grave. And what did he do? He says, all I want now is you to have a thankful heart. You've got faith. You've been trusting me. Now you have a heart of thanksgiving. In all things you can give thanks. And if you don't have a heart of thanksgiving, I don't know where you're at with the Lord. But I'll tell you what, you may be at a place in your life. You may not be given a heart of thanksgiving because you haven't came through that first a part of your life where you need to reach out more and trust God more and quit complaining and quit complaining about what you don't have on the table or what you don't drive or what you're not wearing or what you're not sleeping in or whatever you're going through and the Lord says get past that and when you really trust me you'll have a heart of thanksgiving you'll have a heart of thanksgiving for those few peas and cornbread on your plate You'll be thankful for that one pair of shoes. And let me tell you what's going to take place. The blessings of God will start flowing in your life. Because I tell you what, I love to give to my children when they have a thankful heart. My little granddaughter, oh, she's spoiled rotten. And I tell you what, we went shopping with her. And we dr- she drug us around the mall. There we went in here. We went in there. And when she got home, she decided she wasn't, she was going to throw a fit. And she wasn't thankful at all. She had done forgot everything that happened. But a lot of us are the same way. But when we're God's children. We done already forgot all the things that they did, all the gifts and all the blessings, how he brought us through things and how he supplied for our needs and all the things. But we easily forget when we start to get uh, set in our way and we, we want our way this way, Lord, right now. I, I want it this way. And, boy, she was throwing her little fit. But I tell you what, Paul, Paul said, come here. I want to know what's wrong with you. No, wrong thing to do. We may better not tell God no. And so she told him no. And she, he said, you better come over. He even screamed at her like Granny does. Because, see, she'll mind me when I scream at her. And he, she still just stood there and said, no, I don't want to come. He jumped up out of that couch, ran over there, and popped her hiney and left some little red marks on that hiney. And I tell you what, she, he blistered her good. But I tell you what, she, where was she two minutes later? Up loving in his lap. With her arms around his shoulder, giving Papa sugar and telling him how much she loved him. Because, see, though, I tell you why. He wasn't going to spare that rod because he was not going to have a rebellious child, an unthankful child. So if the rod is coming on you, because, see, my God's not mean. He's a loving God. He loves you, and he don't want you to be unthankful. He wants you to have a thankful heart. Why does he want you to have a thankful heart? He wants you to have a thankful heart so he can pour out blessings on you. He wants to give you more. And see, if she's not thankful for what you got, do you think I want to go back out and do anything else for her? No. Do you, would you want to? No. And when your children do you like that, do you want to go get them more? No. But when you have a thankful heart and you climb up in the Father's lap, you climb up in Jesus' lap, you climb up in the lap of God, and you put your arms around him, and I said, Lord, I know that you had to take the rod out. And because I was telling you, no, I wouldn't do this, and I was telling you, no, I won't go there, and no, I won't come here, and no, I won't bid to your calling, and no, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. But yet he has to get the rod after us because he loves us so much. And then we realize, oh, it was the Lord. It was loving on us. He was letting us know I don't 
want you to be a rebellious child. I don't want you to be a disobedient child, but I want you to come unto me. And then he takes you by the hand. He takes you by the arm. He says, I still love you even though I had to spank you. I'm not mad at you at all. See, the Lord's not mad at you. When those things happen, you say, well, is the Lord mad at me? No, the Lord's not mad at you. The Lord don't get mad at you. He, yes, he gets angry. But I'm going to tell you what, all he does is take the swift hand. He don't waste no time. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'll, take, I'll nip this in the bud right now. And he's easy because, see, he can get rough. He can get rough. And I know people don't like to hear that way of preaching because it makes God look mean. Well, God's not mean, but I tell you what, he's a God that loves his children. He's a God that cares, and he's not going to let them go to hell. It would be like me just telling one of my children, go on down that road in the middle of the highway riding your bike, and I'll just trust God. That would be about the Lord saying, go on out in the world, and I just trust you to do it on your own. You don't need me. Yes, I need him to watch over me. I need him to direct me. I need him to take me by the hand. I need him to correct me sometimes. I need him to pull me back away sometimes out of danger. I need him to do that. Because, see, I want to have a thanksgiving heart. I want to have a thankful heart. I want to be a heart of thanksgiving. I want to be lift the name of the Lord up. I want to be able to come to the house of God. And when I come to the house of God, I'm not murmuring and complaining about what I don't have and what I can't do and where I can't go. But I want to have a thankful heart for what he's already done in my life, what he's going to do that I cannot see, and what he's already done for me, and what he's doing for me today, and what he's doing for you and what he did in back and what he did on the cross there's plenty to thank the Lord for the opportunity to live for Christ the opportunity to go to heaven the opportunity to be in the house of God the opportunity to even mention the name of Jesus to even know him and have the knowledge that some don't even have that in, in itself is a blessing just to know that you can know Jesus Christ he's a merciful God who loves and cares about you and I. He didn't leave you here. He didn't bring you here and bring you this far to leave you. He's not mad at you. And he, that he, I'm telling you why a lot of people get this concept in their mind. He's mad at me, and I, I just don't know what to do. When is he going to get over it? And things are not going right. I tell you what, maybe he'll get over his madness and he'll forget. Well, that God's not mad at you. God's waiting for you to have a thankful heart. He's waiting for you to thankful, say thank you for what you've got right there, right in front of you. He's waiting for you to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we can get in ourselves. And if, I tell you what, even if you don't have a thankful heart, get to a place where you just make that mouth do it. You know, I tell you what, when you go on a diet, you make yourself stay away from the sweets. That's the hardest thing for me to do. And I especially in my tea because I drink tea with my sugar. And now I can have sugar with my tea. And I want that tea with my sugar. And that's the hardest thing. But you know what? Sometimes we have to make ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for the beans. Thank you for what few clothes I have. Thank you, Lord, for the house that I'm in. Thank you for the car that I have. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm giving you something that's really good today. Because if you start hanging on to that, you'll see blessings falling through there. I'm telling you, they'll come through your door. They'll just walk right on in. Blessings will follow. He said, the blessings will follow you. The blessings will follow not only you, will follow your children. And you'll also live long to see your children blessed as well. Until the Lord comes back and gets us. And then I'll definitely see them blessed. And see, I'm not talking about so much blessed with the things of this world. I'm talking about the spiritual blessings that come from giving thanks to the Lord. Because there's more than just giving physical, having these physical things. There's spiritual things in our life that we need. There's things that people are going through. There's spirits that's tormenting people. There's things that's tormenting their minds. There's spirits that are sitting on their shoulders telling them that, I'm telling you what, there's people with spirits on their shoulders telling them, you'll never have nothing. You'll never amount to anything. You'll never go nowhere in your life. There's lying spirits that's sitting there and telling me that they don't need some spiritual blessings. They need some spiritual 
spirits cast out. They need some spirits cast down. And when you give the thanksgiving from your lips, I'm telling you what, those spirits don't want you to do that. They want to stand there and lie on your shoulder. They want to sit on top of your head. They want to beat you in the head. I'm telling you what, it's almost like a piece of metal, a piece of cast iron coming down on you. You feel the weight and the pressure of the world, and it's coming down on you. And you think you're going to about to collapse underneath it. But I'm going to tell you something. The Lord says, look up, and you'll miss it. You just look up and give me thanks, and you watch what I'll do if you'll look up. Look up to Jesus. Look to him. Hold your head up high towards him. Hold your hands up before him. I'm saying not to have a proud look. Look, I'm saying to be humble before him. That you will look to him. And you won't look to the world. And you won't look to this individual over here for, to supply your need. But you'll look to the almighty that is able to do the impossible in your life. The impossible. And when we do that, we give thanks for what we cannot see. Blessings come after. Blessings will flow. Because, and but here's another thing. The word of God says walk up brightly before him. It didn't say, well, these blessings are going to come along. And you can just go out there and live a life of sin and live anyway. Yes, there is a way to live. That's righteous before the Lord. There sure is. We're to walk up brightly before the Lord. We're to walk in the way of holiness. We're to walk in the way of righteousness. He didn't tell us that we could come and go as we please and do whatever we want and say anything we want to anybody and hurt people's feelings and be unmerciful and uncompassionate and unforgiving. He did not tell me I could be that way. I'm telling you, he pierced the, this heart of mine. He told me, you better be compassionate. You better be loving. You better be forgiving. You better forgive your brother and sister. If you got all together, your brother or sister you better go to that one you better let them know that you need a forgiveness or you need to talk to them and get the thing worked out and not build up some kind of bitterness in your life because see Jesus is on your side he's not against you he is for you he is for you and so we forget that he is for me. He's not against me. I am for Taylor. I'm not against her. When I go in there and I grab her, snatch her up and spank her about him, I'm telling you, I'm not against that child. I love that child with all my heart. Jesus loves you with all his heart. He loves you so much that he died on Calvary's hill. He shed his blood for you. He was pierced for you. His skin was torn off his body for you. His beard was plucked out of his body. I'm telling you, what, what can we be thankful for? I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for the cross. I'm thankful for his mercy. It endures forever and ever in my life. His mercy looks down and sees you and I. And he knows what you're going through. He knows what you may be facing. But I tell you what, he also teaches us to hold on and to walk up brightly before him. Not to walk in the ways of the wicked. He tells us right in the word what I just read. He says, not walk in the paths of the wicked and their iniquities. What is iniquity? I tell you what, if none of it was sin, then why would he say not to walk in the ways of the iniquity? In the crooked way. There is sin. And yes, he covers us by his blood. But it's up to us to repent. And it's up to us to get up and walk. And try to strive to enter in that straight and narrow way. Not to live any kind of life. You get up and you wash your knees off. Like I said in Sunday school a thousand times. You get up and you go on. If you've torn your knees up and your legs are uh, splintered and your knees are splintered from falling down and stumbling around, I don't care how many times you've stumbled and fall. You get up and keep going on because it's not the one that ran the fastest. It's not the one that ran the swiftest. It's those that endure to the end. I might be bleeding all the way to the uh, pearly gates, but I'm tell you what, when I get to the pearly gates, when I stand before my Lord and Savior, he's going to tell me, well done, Brother Lonnie. He's going to say, well done, Sister uh, uh, Cheryl. You come on in. Well done, Cheryl. You come on in. Enter in. Well done, my faithful servant. You know what? All he's going to see is that blood that covers me and someone that endured to the end. He didn't see somebody turn around and went back. Because, see, I'm not trusting in my righteousness. My righteousness is filthy rags. 
my righteousness is uh, my righteousness has got wrinkles on it. It's got spot blemishes. Everything on it. Everything, but His righteousness is without spot and wrinkle and blemish. There's not one on it, and it don't get spotty. You're not going to spot His. You're not going to put a spot on His righteousness. You're not going to put a wrinkle on His because see, His is not. He covers your spots and your wrinkles. And so we're to trust God and believe in him. And when we get to that place, then we can have a heart of thanksgiving. And we thank him in all things. We can get up and praise God in all areas of our life. Uh, Jarena, can you come to the organ tonight? Jesus says, we're not to try to gain the riches of this world. I'm telling you what, if we trust in the Lord, the blessing is going to come your way. If you just keep praising God. If you keep lifting up, this is a th- time of Thanksgiving. Before, and I know we, some of you may hear another Thanksgiving, but some of them are going out of town like Trisha Love. And I don't think she's going to be in service this weekend, are you, Trisha? Maybe. She might be. And she may not hear a Thanksgiving uh, sermon. She may. But you know what? I came because I wanted to acknowledge my Lord showing his mercy and giving him thanks for all that he has done for me. He's done so many things for me, and I know he's done so much for you that you can't even make your list is about as long as mine. It begins, and it seems like it never ends because there's so many things just like this uh, right here. That was just a piece of what he does, and they were just showing us his mercy endured through the whole entire word of God, and it kept going through. Go ahead, Jerina. I'll tell you what, everybody would. Let's all stand.